Good morning. I have a joke for you. Oh, wow. That was like, wow. I don't have a joke for you. Forget it. You're not getting a joke. That was, I'm just humiliated. And Okay, here we go. Three little boys are bragging about their fathers to one another. The first little boy boasts that his father owns a farm. The second said his dad owns a whole store. The third boy, a pastor's son, replies, that's nothing, my dad owns hell. <laughs> no way, the other boy scoffed. How can anyone own hell? My dad does, the preacher's son said. I heard my mom telling my grandmother that she gave him hell last night. <laughs> oh, come on, that was funny. That was, kind of, maybe. Can you imagine Maybe you can. Can you imagine living in a context, a situation, an environment where deceit is the norm, where people playing games with their words or hiding their true intentions or somehow creating a facade about who they are and what they're doing, that that is the normal way of living. It's a frightening prospect, and yet people experience it. In the Gospels, Jesus one time is dealing with a group of people that this is true about them, that their kind of whole way of communicating, of relating, uh, was bound up with, dece with deception. And Jesus confronted these religious leaders who were his main opponents of everything that he was trying to do, of who he was and what he stood for. And at one point, he told them in a very confrontational way that they were following the path of their father, the devil. That Satan was a liar from the beginning and that lying was his native language. It's quite a thing to say to someone, that lying has become your kind of first language in life. We're going to begin a series together this weekend called loving well and believing better. The, the title or the theme comes from a, a verse in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, where Paul writes to the church in Thessalonia and he says to them that he's really thankful for them. And it's right that he should be thankful because their faith is growing more and more, he says. And that the love that they have for one another is increasing. So he says that their faith is growing, it's becoming more, and their love is increasing. They're getting better at love. And he says he ought to be thankful for them, and it's right to be thankful, because such lives like that, where your love is growing and your faith is growing, that's an impactful life. That's a life that people who are touched by that person are grateful for. When I think about that verse and when I was putting together this series, I was trying to imagine what Paul saw in their life that he could make that statement so convincingly. That their love, in fact, was growing, that their faith was growing. What were the kind of signs or the, the markers, you know, kind of as your child grows, you put them against, you know, something and mark how, you know, how tall they've become. What were those kind of places to mark out and say, you know, you're really getting better at love. You're loving better. And you're believing better in your life. What would those things be? I think something more than what's superficial. Something more than just kind of a, a surface assessment of things. Something more even in terms of faith than just getting your kind of doctrine dialed in. Just getting more accurate in the, in the truth that you confess and that you hold to. Something more was going on in them than simply that they were able to pass a test better or, or that superficially they appeared to be more loving towards one another. In this series together over the next month or so, we're going to talk about a series of skills that I believe are the evidence of loving well and believing better. Skills that we develop and grow in our life that may or may not have, you know, kind of been part of our background, part of the training of our childhood, but, but coming to you know, those free decisions that we make about 